Hey, little demon. Yes, you demon. Uh-uh, hey. If you're gonna do that, come. Hello, and welcome to my channel, Haley Marie Vintage. Today, I'm really excited. I'm bringing you two sewing projects because they're a blouse and a waistcoat. They won't really match together, I don't think, but I still think they'll be fun to make nonetheless. So first up, let's talk about the kind of waistcoat. So this is the fabric I'll be using. This is an upholstery fabric that I just thought was really pretty. I really liked the flowers. And let me find like the deer and the foxes. I don't like the elephant, so I will be cutting around to the elephant. I don't know, I feel like it like just doesn't go with the rest of the woodland creatures here. I mean, I guess maybe elephants live in the woods. I, I think they're savanna animals, but I'm not positive now that I think about it. So that is kind of the pieces of pattern I'll be able to stick with. And then I'll be using this as the lining. So the pattern I'm using for this, I don't have the cover, so I'm going to see if I can find it, and if not, I'll blow up this image for you guys so you can actually see it. But basically, it's a little waistcoat that like clips around the back and halters around the back. They actually don't call it a waistcoat here, they call it a weeskit? W-E-S-K-I-T. Westkit? Weeskit? I don't know. I think this will be a really cute combo, but it should be a pretty fast project, which is why I'm including two. We're sticking with the animal theme. In fact, I believe both of these fabrics have rabbits on them, but this is the other piece I will be making. This is some rabbit fabric from the factory. That's a tongue twister. I think Heather picked up for me and sent to me. It was in pretty poor condition and really stained, so I was pretty excited when it all came out in the wash. And that one I'm going to be making into we have this 1940s blouse with the gathered shoulders and a pocket. I think this will be really cute and I can have like make sure there's a really really like featured hey spooky. <laughs> so I'm really excited about both of these projects and I think it'll be fun to kind of make some little animal themed. Like I said, I don't think these will wear well together, but I'll probably try them on together just for the fun of it. Excuse you. But with that, let's kick off cutting. I think I'm gonna start these I'm going to be making in my parents' basement. So let's travel a thousand miles and go to my parents' basement where we'll start cutting. Here I am cutting out the fabric for the animal waistcoat. I think I looked it up, that's what it's called. The waistcoat, which makes sense because it kind of sounds like waistcoat, waistcoat, waistcoat. Anyway, I am getting ready to cut this and this took a little bit longer than you would think for only being three pieces just because I was trying to place the pieces really deliberately to cut out the animals I wanted to focus on, which were the deer and the fox and the rabbits and to avoid as much as I could the elephants and the monkeys. I wanted this to have a little bit more of a woodland feel. So yeah, this just took a while, but otherwise the cutting out of this pattern was the typical type of cutting out I guess you do. And then here I am cutting out the exact same pattern on the black cotton fabric for lining. I do really like this for a heavier duty lighting. I will link it in the description. It's um, just the black Kona cotton and I just pick it up for lining and I usually just have some on hand in case I need a black lining. It is heavier than I like. Like now I have almost completely switched over to lawns for lining. However, it's perfect for something like this, which I am putting with upholstery fabric. And because I hate cutting and I just wanted to get it over with, here I am cutting out the rabbit fabric. This is actually a knit which I've never worked with before and I'm slightly afraid of. Actually, that's not true. I think I worked with a knit for the swimsuit I made a while ago, but that was like a very intentionally stretchy knit. And this is just kind of a weird 60s, 70s polyester knit. So I'm gonna have to kind of figure out working with this. However, it did cut nicely. Like knits, these just don't seem to like unravel a ton. I don't know, I, I just definitely enjoyed cutting out this fabric and I can tell it's not gonna need a lot of seam finishing, which is super nice. These rabbits are not a one-way pattern, so I didn't really have to be specific in the way I cut things out, so I just cut these out as I normally would. Okay, um, I don't have anywhere, I don't have a tripod up here, so um, we're just uh, hand, hand holding this, which means it's gonna be shaky, sorry. Checking in, it has been, I think, three days since I cut out my fabric. I was pretty sick from the booster shot on Sunday, I had cut the fabric after I got my booster, like right after. Then the next day I woke up and I felt pretty icky, but all that said, still go get your booster. It's really important and it'll save lives. And then Monday and Tuesday were super busy at work, so I was doing that. And then now we're finally to Wednesday, I'm finally able to sew, it's after work. And so I'm gonna head out and sew and do that. I'm gonna head down to the basement, we're currently upstairs 
in my childhood bedroom, as you can kind of see. I'm hoping to finish at least one top today and maybe even get started on the second. We'll see. Before I started sewing, I noticed my machine was really, really disgusting. And by my machine, I mean my mom's machine, but I'm the only one who uses it, so it's my fault it's gross. So I went ahead and took the time to clean this guy out. Always remember to clean your machines, they'll thank you for it. And I definitely like try to clean it between every project, it doesn't always happen, but it, I did notice a difference after I cleaned out my mom's machine and it definitely ran much smoother. After all that satisfying cleaning is done, I'm just threading my machine and then I'm starting in on the sewing. I'm starting with just sewing the darts, which is what the instructions say to do. That's usually the first thing you do when you make a garment with rare exception, which I have run into, but I went ahead and followed the pattern on this. I don't usually cut into my darts just because, I don't know, it makes me anxious. I have no rational explanation. I don't know what to say. However, in this case I did because I knew there was gonna be a lining and it would be completely sealed and the edges wouldn't fray as much because they wouldn't see as much abuse as maybe some of my other darts do. So yeah, this is me just trimming them and then pressing them flat. And then here I am marking my bound buttonhole on a scrap. I chose to do a bound buttonhole for this one because there's only one buttonhole needed so it wasn't gonna be too painful. And I felt like this fabric would really fray inside a like sewn buttonhole and I didn't wanna hand sew a buttonhole because I'm too lazy for that now. I'm just marking the rectangle that goes around the button. I chose the buttons based off of a poll on Instagram. If you are interested in contributing to which buttons I'd put with what garments, uh, definitely follow me there for the ability to input on projects. Here we have our bound buttonhole and I am just pressing it. And then here I am just pinning all the edges of the pieces together that I'm supposed to sew together. This is pretty straightforward and easy and there's not really much to it. And then once I finished with sewing this, I went ahead and pressed it and it is looking really good and I'm feeling very excited. I feel like I got the animal placement overall pretty correct, except for that weird elephant in the dart that now makes it look like a smushed, deformed elephant, but uh, it happens. We can't all be perfect. And then here I am just doing the exact same steps I just did to the lining. So here things are starting to take their full formation. I am just matching up the lining to the outside and pinning that to then prepare it to sew. Basically, you will just sew around this whole perimeter except for one stretch on the side, which I will then use to turn out the garment. And it, you usually wanna make sure you're turning out the garment around a straight edge because that'll be the easiest to close because you're not trying to follow any curves or anything like that. Here, I have gone ahead and sewn everything together and I am now just turning it inside out from that hole I previously mentioned. This was really fun. I actually haven't made anything that's lined using this technique because usually there's some sheerness in the lining of whatever I've made. So I really enjoyed this and thought it was a lot of fun. And I always just really enjoy the pressing process of a piece like this because it feels just really nice. So here, once I got everything turned inside out, I've already clipped everything off camera and now I am just turning it inside out and then you'll see when I'm pressing it, I am pressing it and making sure that mainly the blue fabric is showing on the one side, even if that means it shows over on the black side since the black side is what's on my body and the blue is on the outside, it's really important to make sure that the black isn't showing on the blue side. Now that that is all pressed, I am just top stitching. I am top stitching kind of backwards because I'm doing it on the black side, but that is again just to make sure that none of the black rolls into the front and so that way none of the black shows in the front. And I feel like if I stitch this from the top in the actual front, I would be more likely to have the black roll in a way that I do not desire. With the gap that you left open, you press that fabric in and then you just top stitch right over it and you can basically not even tell there was ever a giant hole to turn everything inside out from there. Once you have all that completed, all I have left to do is put on the hooks in the eyes and the buttons, which I'm really excited about. Again, these buttons were chosen by you guys. I was stumped between a bunch of different buttons and I'm really happy with the buttons you guys chose. The instructions just say to have the top and the bottom a half inch from the edge and then distribute the rest the way you want. And you will see this later in the reveal now. 
We are on day two of this project. I actually think I could have finished up the first shirt and the second shirt all in one day if I hadn't not had ballpoint needles here. So I forgot to bring any ballpoint needles. Since I am sewing with what I think is a double knit polyester, I think I need a ballpoint needle for that. Um, my needle was like jumping all over the place as I was prepping pieces yesterday. So I ran to Joanne's to get that and I also picked up some bias tape because it looks like the instructions say to use bias tape, although they didn't mention that at all in the findings, or that's not what it's called, that's what's called for jewelry, the notions list. Um, and also sorry for the weird lighting, it's just weird lighting down here. So I'm gonna now give that needle a try and hopefully it will sew better with this piece of fabric. So fingers crossed, um, we'll see if that works. So off camera, I have done things to prep this pattern, like put in the gathering stitches as well as any basting that was needed. And here you're seeing me gather the like shoulders to the yoke that's up at the top. This is how you get the gathers that make up the bust so you don't have to do any darts. So that is what I'm doing here is I'm just tugging on these gathering stitches to get it to fit onto the yoke. Here, I think I lost some footage but now I am just sewing the shoulder seams and the side seams to get this ready for its next step. I think I was just feeling wild and not like filming this day and like I just wanted to get through this project because here's a bunch more steps that I skipped on camera and now I am just getting the bias interfacing sewn in to the collar. This is how I'm going to finish the seam. Again, the pattern did not mention needing bias strip. Maybe I was just supposed to make it with this fabric, but this fabric is way too bulky for that. So I went with just the cheap polyester stuff you can get from Joann's. I had a hard time initially figuring out which way to sew this on so it flips the way I want. This is how that usually goes. And then once I figured it out, I pinned it down and then I sewed it. Here I am just showing you how I narrow hemmed around the bottom of this garment. I just did a double fold as small as I could and then just tried to keep my stitching even around the bottom. Admittedly, I'm kind of sloppy with my blouse hems because I always know they'll be tucked in to whatever I'm wearing and they won't be out and about and showing. And then here I've already gathered down my sleeve to fit into the opening to do my set sleeve, but now I am just sewing it very, very carefully. I like to sew with the part that's supposed to be completely flat up so I can make sure I'm not having any weird creasing there that will impact the way the garment looks. And I like to have the gathers down because if there's a like crease in the gather, it's a little bit less major than if there is a crease in the smooth part of the sleeve that is where like your shoulder is. And then here we are just cranking out buttonholes. It took me a little bit to adjust to my mom's buttonhole stitch on her machine. Hers actually I think goes the opposite way of mine, which I say now and it's gonna be famous last words. And then here I am tacking down the lining and I am sewing on all of the buttons. I always find this part really enjoyable and relaxing because I can kind of just sit there and watch TV. Because I'm at my parents' home, while I have Spooky with me, she is not allowed in the whole house because my mom's scared to get lost or that my parents' dog would eat her. So I do miss my little hand sewing buddy as I'm doing this hand sewing, but no fears. I'm sure she will appear in future videos. And then here I am sewing on the buttons. You guys again helped me choose these buttons. I also put a poll up of this one on my Instagram. So again, if you want to interact with these and see some previews of upcoming project, definitely follow me there. Once all the buttons are sewn on, the hand sewing is done and we are ready for the reveal. Ready for wrap up, Spooky has the zoomies. What else is new? It's dark, it's rainy, it's gross here in Seattle. Everything is as it should be. But let's talk through these projects real quick. I absolutely love this 
Quest kit, I believe. And I think it's so cute. I love the buttons. I love the shape of it. It does need maybe a little bit less room in the bust. However, it is super comfy, so I feel a little bit conflicted about that. I really like how it like hugs in my waist. It's pretty much everything I want. I love the squirrel and the deer. And there's a fox over here. Um, I'm very happy with my woodland creature choices. And the lining's super nice. Uh, everything about this is just great, and I'm very, very happy with it. And there's kind of not a ton to say about this one. This was a very straightforward piece to make. While it was new for me to do the lining the way it had me do the lining, it made sense. I just felt like I knew what I was doing, and I think I could whip up a gajillion of these really quickly. So I'm excited to actually have done this pattern because now I know it takes about a yard of fabric if you're not trying to do directional prints. I think this will be a very common thing you see me make to kind of use up that extra like weird yard I sometimes end up with because I overbuy fabric because I'm anxious I won't have enough. The one that makes me less happy, however, it makes me much more happy now than it did right when I had finished it. I was not super happy with this piece. I didn't really love how it fit. However, like now that I've stepped away from it for a while, I do like how it fits. It does drape a little bit weird because it's a double knit polyester stretch thing. Um, I don't think I would like sew with this fabric again unless it was a print just as cute as this one. I can't see myself wanting to wear a ton of this material. It seems really hot and sweaty. Uh, and it's like also kind of sheer. So there's like 6,000 things that is not great about this material. However, the rabbits were cute enough to make it all worth it. I think this ended up really cute. And without having looked at it for two weeks, I now feel really good about it. The collar is cute. And the one thing I will note with the collar though is something about this pattern was maybe a little bit off because I know I followed the pattern correctly. And there's like a two inch gap here, three inches. And that's like not usually how a collar goes. Usually they should meet like close to the middle or like even just here. So I don't totally know what happened here, but that's okay. Otherwise this was just kind of a tough material to work with. It was obviously not very ironable. Um, however, the edges were nice and like didn't need a ton of finishing because they aren't fray. I also do really love these green buttons down the back. I am happy with this blouse. I will not say this is going to be my favorite project of the year. However, it will also certainly not be my least favorite because I'm happy with it. I don't imagine getting rid of it out of my wardrobe. I'm excited to wear it. And I definitely learned a lot sewing with this fabric that I think will apply to future pieces. Like I said, we're done, we're finished. I am happy with both pieces. I'm ecstatic over the West kit. Did I just change how I said it again? Whatever. Um, but I think that wraps up this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did enjoy and you have the ability to buy me a coffee, I would really, really appreciate it. I have my Kofi linked down below. And then if not, no worries. You can always support me by commenting, liking, or subscribing, or all three if that is what you desire to do. I super appreciate the support, and I hope I will see you again next time. Bye!